First, Salem City Manager, thank you uh, for being here and thank you for your continued coverage of our uh, Salem Water Advisory. Uh, this morning, with help from others, I would like to update you on, on, on what occurred over the weekend and what we have planned going forward. Yesterday, we received test results from Friday that indicate that our water is below the EPA guidelines for cyanotoxins. Sunday's results were the second day of, of clear or results that were below EPA guidelines. That's good news. Feedback from the community, from our partners, and in consultation with many, we have decided to extend, though, the health advisory, the water advisory. We are extending the water advisory until we have a solution that will keep the toxins out of our water or keep the toxins at levels below the EPA guidelines. We estimate that we will need two weeks to do that. And we have Jude Groans from our consulting engineer, Corello, uh, to go into more detail for you on what we have already started testing and what we are planning on implementing at our Garen Island treatment facility, which is uh, shown there on, on the screen. And we have visuals for you. The decision to extend the advisory, we understand, may cause some concern among our residents and water customers. We receive considerable feedback through social media, through phone calls, that the on-again, off-again nature of our advisory was causing confusion. I believe that extending the advisory until we can assure our water customers, our residents, that the water is safe to drink is the best course of action. To help us communicate with our residents and our water customers, we are developing additional information pieces. One you see here behind me, and we'll be able to explain that later in the press conference, to help the public continue to have the information they need to make decisions regarding uh, drinking Salem's water. Again, throughout these advisories, the water has been safe to drink for most of Salem's population for most of our water customers. And the results we received Saturday and Sunday indicate the water is safe to drink for everyone. We need to get through this period of algae. We need to get through this period of uncertainty regarding the toxins before we'll lift the advisory. At this point, I'd like Jude to come up and, and speak to you uh, in very specific terms regarding the steps that the city has taken to prevent algae, to prevent toxins from entering our water system at levels above the EPA guidelines. Good morning. Again, my name is Jude Grounds with Corolla Engineers. Um, past couple of weeks, uh, Corolla has been working in collaboration with the city of Salem to proactively ship samples of, of water that contain algal toxins to our lab in Boise, Idaho. Our team has been working day and night to analyze those um, samples to look at solutions, both near-term and long-term solutions for removing uh, algal toxins from the water. Um, over the weekend, we've, we've more or less finalized our bench scale analysis um, uh, and, and have shortlisted um, the recommendations for, for near-term solutions. Um, the near-term solution that we're recommending is carbon adsorption of the algal toxins. Um, this is something we can implement here, as was stated earlier, here in the coming weeks, and we feel this has a high probability of success. Uh, the logistics of adding the powdered activated carbon um, are, it's complicated. There's no s simple um, solution here, but we are going to look at um, the solutions at the bench scale in the lab as we completed last weekend. The pilot scale, um, which is a model of the treatment plant located there in Garen Island at the full scale water treatment plant. Then at, at demonstration scale where we're adding um, powdered activated carbon to uh, just one filter to make sure that we don't create other challenges uh, with the full scale filters. And once we've proven that we can um, uh, consistently remove algal toxins, we'll then look to implement the solution at the full scale. 
and as indicated, that's about a two week, um, a two week window. I don't know if there are specific questions. Can you just explain a little bit of that very, very sort of simply as to what actually is done as if you're explaining it to your next door neighbor? Yep. Um, so what we hope to do is add powdered activated carbon, which is kind of like a, a dust. It looks and feels like dust. We'll add that to the, um, to the water. Um, we'll allow it to react. We'll keep it in solution and allow it to react and get um, as much contact with those algal toxins as possible. The algal toxins will will adsorb to that carbon, will then settle that carbon out, and then apply that water without algotoxins or with reduced levels of algotoxins onto the slow sand filters for final treatment. So does it take the toxins out of the water, out of the algae? It takes the toxins out of the water, that's correct. So you mentioned um, a number of solutions you're looking at, and this one would be the one that you'd recommend. Um, is this short term then, and what is then your long term? Uh, since uh, we first started detecting the toxins, we've been taking several steps, making several changes to our treatment, uh, adding chlorine, diverting water fr from, from the reservoir, bringing in uh, groundwater to, to try to dilute the toxin. The approach that was just shared with you is a viable approach for this algae season and for uh, next algae season. Algae season runs from May through through September, October, depending upon the weather. So we see this as a viable approach. It's an approach that's been used elsewhere in the United States and Europe. Longer term, we'll be bringing recommendations, bringing options to council uh, for more uh, comprehensive uh, treatment approaches uh, to our water, such as ozone, and if there are follow-up questions on that, I'd, I'd have Peter Fernandez, our public works director, uh, speak to those. Um, would there be any other fallout from the carbon, the powder carbon? Um, I know that it would take the toxins out of the water, but would it have any other effects um, on, you know, those pipes or just in general? Um, it shouldn't have any downstream um, effects on the water quality. You did mention other problems that could persist if it was uh, put in, in a, and you weren't sure when you did so. What were those? Um, th there, as I mentioned, there there are um, risks that we've anticipated. Um, one of them is that it removes not only the bad carbon that we want to get rid of, but the carbon food that the bacteria that live on the surface of your slow sand filters need to survive. If that's the case, and, and we're tested that at the bench scale, we will supplement or amend on the water by dosing um, some carbon that's biologically available to the bacteria on the filters. And that would be something like uh, vinegar or something that's commonly found in, uh, on your uh, store shelves. Would you need to constantly replace the carbon throughout the summer? You said it's like a carbon dust. Do you need to clear it off to get rid of the bad stuff and replace it? I apologize for these basic questions. No, no. It's, a good question. Um, what we hope to do is settle um, the powdered activated carbon post adsorption um, in the south basin, you can see behind me, um, in a channel there, uh, and then allow the water that's being applied to the slow sand filters um, to not have any powdered activated carbon, thereby not impacting the performance of those filters. So there will be some additional requirements to dredge out that carbon from the south basin um, and, and remove it, haul it off site. It was mentioned that this has been used elsewhere. Do you have any specific locations? Yeah, most water treatment plants here in Oregon rely on powdered activated carbon, largely for taste and odor. You know, a, a lot of our surface waters here um, get a, kind of a seasonal taste and odor event that happens one or two weeks out of the year. So most treatment plant operators are used to applying powdered activated carbon upstream of their treatment processes to deal with those taste and odor challenges. Um, how it is applied to algal toxins is novel in this case, thus all of the research that uh, was done over the weekend. Could you explain that more? Novel in what way? Um, algal toxins are an emerging contaminant of concern in the water industry, and so the research, there's plenty of research demonstrating how powdered activated carbon and other types of carbon, granular activated carbon, for example, um, is effective in absorbing those, those contaminants. But I don't believe that anyone in Oregon has dosed powdered activated carbon um, to deal with algal toxins um, to date. Is this sort of like the, the powder from broken charcoal with cats? 
That's right. Yeah, if you were to take a briquette and just smash it into dust, that's essentially what powdered activated carbon looks and feels like. How much is this going to be costing the city? Good morning, Peter Fernandez, Public, uh, City of Salem Public Works Director. Uh, our estimate is that uh, this process will cost us about $2 million for this season. Uh, we will anticipate uh, probably a similar cost uh, next season as we implement uh, the, same, the same treatment uh, system. Uh, but by then we will uh, fully understand what the longer term solution is so that uh, then we can move to, to construction of, uh, of the, the future treatment process. Do you have any Yeah, if we move to a different treatment system, uh, the city manager spoke about perhaps uh, applying ozone to the water. Uh, we're probably looking at 20 to 30 million dollars. Uh, new basin, it's, it's, a, it's a whole new treatment system added to the system that, uh, that we have in place. Uh, we are fortunate uh, that uh, the council has adopted small and steady uh, rate increases over the past 10 years uh, so that uh, we are well positioned financially in the in the utility to be able to uh, uh, to afford these kinds of these kinds of costs. Right, so this isn't going to have an, a negative impact on the budget long term. These, this two million dollar cost this year and then more next year. No, it will have an impact on the budget, uh, but it will. Uh, we we feel that at those levels, certainly the the two million dollar cost can be absorbed can be absorbed within the budget, and uh, then the uh, the longer costs. Uh, you know, can be absorbed. Uh, we're, we're, we're studying to see if we can absorb it within the planned rate increases, which uh, we've said over the years we want to maintain at no more than 3% a year. Regarding rates, um, there has been some talk online and among you know, community members regarding uh, their water bill, uh, considering that it is toxic, uh, at least for some people. Is there any talk about giving them a break on their bill? Uh, the council will. Uh, 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 may discuss that in the future. I think one important thing to understand is that water costs $2.50 for 748 gallons. So, uh, you know, the majority of, uh, of our customers' water bills are, uh, are related to uh, wastewater or the fixed costs. The, uh, the, uh, the, the volumetric charge is actually very small. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, Dick has a question. Peter, you, you test for a lot of things, uh, and this is one where you kind of ex expected to find negative things. What else are you testing for that, that might be lurking out there that you decided <laughs> to test in with? And will this charcoal uh, program help mitigate any of those that might be out there? So I'm asking about the unknown. Right, so, so we test, and I don't have the list in front of me, we test for uh, a lot of constituents that are regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, uh, our customers get their annual consumer confidence report that uh, shows uh, what those constituents uh, might be and uh, we are consistently well below any kind of advisory levels for those. Uh, algal toxins, as, uh, as we've expressed before, is, is unregulated uh, at this point by the EPA. Uh, we started testing in 2011 because we saw uh, the toxin levels, uh, the, the algae levels, uh, rising in uh, Detroit Lake, and we were concerned about that. Uh, once again, uh, the, the, the surprise to us, the reason that we had to lay out the health advisory is because we found it in the finished water rather than in the, rather than in the source water. Uh, as for other things, I do not believe we're testing for anything else. Uh, again, we're not seeing anything else in the source water that gives us concern beyond uh, the algae. Uh, in the future, there may be other things, and we will, I can assure you that we'll be testing early and often if we ever see anything else that concerns us. Do you have anything to add on the carbon as far as the carbon on other stuff in our water? Um, carbon is an effective um, treatment tool and a best available technology uh, for a number of different contaminants of concern. A lot of pharmaceuticals and personal care products and those, those types of things that when we look in the crystal ball um, have us concern, uh, not necessarily for City of Salem given your pristine watershed, but, 
but um, other communities around the nation. So carbon is effective at, at removing um, or organics in water. So and you mentioned that this might be the first time in Oregon that powder carbon has been used for this specific purpose. Um, in other states, has it been used for this purpose, or are you kind of are you blazing new ground here, just generally? Um, Ohio is a state that has uh, had challenges with algal toxins. I'd have to go back and look at the literature to see what they did to deal with algal toxins there. I'm, I don't recall. It. So we don't know for sure that this has worked elsewhere. The, there's plenty of research that demonstrates that uh, powdered activated carbon and carbon adsorption in general is an effective tool for removing algal toxins from water. So um, there's a lot of confidence in the technology. Uh, again, people, this is an unregulated contaminant. Most people aren't even testing for this. Salem is being very proactive in, in trying to test and, and get uh, trends with algal toxins in the watershed. So. Um, People aren't required to treat for it. Um, therefore, they're, they're, um, they may have used powdered activated carbon. It may have absorbed algal toxins, but I don't think anything's been done intentionally. Okay, so the literature you're referring to are just, it's tests. It's not no large scale sort of practical uses. That's correct. Yep. Okay. So then how was this decision, how was this determined as a possible solution? Was it, they, who, who do you talk to for this? So uh, we've engaged the national experts on algal toxins to identify the, both the best short-term and, and long-term solutions um, for the city of Salem's case here. So um, that consensus was, was developed uh, through that panel of experts, and, and, uh, and those are the tests that we're now demonstrating um, in the lab. Does this test have, or is, is what you're doing here have you know, interest nationally as far as if this is the first case of the specific use? Are people, are these experts now watching to see very closely what happens here? Absolutely. Can we talk to some of them? That'd be great. Can you talk to yeah. some of the experts? A absolutely. We'll get you the information. I appreciate that. Has there been any plan to get the testing turned around quicker than two days? Oh, we're, we're going as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, I think Jude mentioned that uh, their laboratory worked all weekend. To, uh, uh, to study this. Uh, the carbon was actually purchased in, from Northern California, right? So uh, the truckload is on its way to, uh, to Salem. 40 pounds of it was, uh, uh, was overnighted to the lab in Boise, Idaho uh, for the testing. So, uh, uh, so the bench testing is, is almost complete and the, uh, the pilot testing out in the field will start this week. So we're going as quickly as we can, uh, but we want to be as prudent as we possibly can so that uh, we know that it works and we know that it doesn't cause any detrimental effects to our treatment system. Peter, I think, can you address the ELISA answer? I think, because that's what she was looking for, whether we have something that's coming that's going to turn around the detection early. Oh, the detection part? Uh, certainly, so we, uh, 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 we, uh, we continue to take uh, samples throughout the, uh, uh, the watershed and, and in town. Uh, we continue to use our out-of-state lab in, in Ohio for the testing. However, we, uh, we have purchased a machine that will allow us to do the screening test, the ELISA test, uh, uh, in-house. That machine uh, was purchased last week. It's uh, uh, on a truck on its way to Salem. It'll arrive this week, and the technician that will help us to install it, calibrate it, and train our staff to use it will be in town next week. So we'll be ready to do uh, the more immediate testing. Uh, by the end of next week, I believe. You said Boise, I'm confused, Ohio, Boise. So Boise, Ohio, uh, Boise, Idaho is the Corolla lab that is uh, studying the activated carbon. Okay. Uh, the lab in Ohio is the one that tests for the toxins itself. And the, and the quick turnaround uh, is local, like the we will be able to test, right, we will be able to test for the toxins yes. uh, at the local level uh, by the end of next week. Okay, and for the treatment system, uh, we will start testing on site at Garen Island later this week, and we hope to be ready to fully implement the carbon uh, to treat our water uh, by the end of the second week. So towards, towards the end of the week of the 25th of, of, of June is what, is what our goal is. Thank you. Can you speak to how this uh, decision
Commission was reached uh, to involve the City Council and others, the, the, the expenditure, the, the two week uh, extension, and sort of the pros and cons of what went into it. I just, I would just appreciate having a little more understanding. Uh, certainly, uh, partly through the, the excellent coverage we've received from, from media and our own social media efforts. Uh, we've had a joint information center going with, with Marion County in the state uh, since uh, the day, since, since Tuesday, so almost a full week. And, and from those efforts, from the feedback we were receiving from residents and water customers, there was confusion. And we realized this is a confusing time uh, and, and concern regarding having an advisory lifting the advisory and then having to put the advisory back in place because we're unable to predict how these toxins uh, behave. We'll have a reading in one spot in our distribution system one day and, and, and nothing the next day and have a reading somewhere else completely, uh, uh, completely surprising to us. So we weren't able to share with the public any real confidence in our ability to keep the toxins below the EPA threshold. And until we can provide that confidence, the decision was made to extend the advisory to continue to provide the test results and to provide additional information that the public can use to make decisions regarding the consumption of water. That decision was reached in consultation with counselors as we updated counselors throughout the advisory in consultation with our partners at Oregon Health Authority and with the Oregon Emergency Management Department. We believe that it was a, a prudent approach, an approach that uses an abundance of caution for our water customers. I believe it will set a foundation for restoring confidence in our water system when we can share with the public that the carbon approach is going to work, has worked, and will work. And moving forward, we'll be able to, with much, much, much greater confidence, say our water is safe to drink for everyone. Are you, people want to know what city uh, employees and city officials are drinking, and I think you said before that you're drinking or their tap water, is that still true? Absolutely, absolutely. Again, this our, our water has been safe to drink for almost everyone uh, all summer, uh, in 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 the spring. Uh, so yes, I am still drinking water, still drinking coffee, still still uh, enjoying uh, Salem's water. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for coming, and we'll uh, we'll be reaching out if we've got any. Uh, more information once we uh, get going with the uh, carbon testing. Okay, thank you.